Hello, it's Scott Manley here. During the Apollo program, the lunar landing training vehicle was developed by NASA to give the astronauts a chance to experience what it would be like to fly a rocket-powered spacecraft in the one-sixth gravity of the moon. Also known affectionately as the Flying Bedstead, or less affectionately as that crazy contraption that almost killed Neil Armstrong, here he is flying here for our reporters. You can see him sitting in the command seat up the front with a jet engine in the middle and little puffs of gas as the reaction control thrusters are you know, firing to control this. Anyway, I was just casually browsing the X-Plane forums and I discovered that somebody has created this in X-Plane. Now, I would normally use X-Plane as a serious simulator, you know, practicing uh, instrument approaches and procedures and talking to air traffic control. But when I saw this thing, I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to have a go at that. And it is an absolutely beautiful model. And that's probably a big part of why I spent 20 bucks on this thing, which uh, has real no, no real practical use to me. And if you think about it, it's actually a simulation of 1 6th G within a flight simulation. So it's a simulation within a simulation. You get it? Well, you can see the little uh, reaction control thruster clusters. Uh, there's the, the avionics computers are all at the back. You've got uh, you six different tanks. There's the hydrogen peroxide on the left and the right, the jet fuel for, for and aft, and then there's a pair of helium spheres under there to pressurize the system. Most of their structure is like open tubular metal. You can see the pilot in there holding on to the, the throttle stick there. And of course, this is a flight sim, so we can t flip on all the switches. We turn on the batteries. Let's turn on the avionics. Open up the main fuel valve so that I can run the engine. Flip the ignition, turn on the starter, and we should hear the engine start to spool up because we are, of course, largely strapped to a giant jet engine. You can hear a bit of banging there. The simulation, for some reason, makes a lot of noise when you're sitting on the ground. I suspect there's some physics problem. Anyway, now we got the engine running. We've got to bring up the rest of the system, so uh, yeah. We have generators, turn those on, and we can then connect the generators to the bus A and B. And now we should be able to go over and check that there's power on the AC and DC buses, and we can flip between bus A and B, verify that we are largely ready for takeoff. So now, as you can imagine, that involves throttling up that uh, engine. And as that throttle engine reaches power, it will begin to lift us up off the surface. And yeah, then the attitude is controlled using the stick on the right. So that's a three axis stick. It has pitch and roll, and it also has a twist to give you yaw control. Now, initially I'm climbing it to altitude in what's called LLTV VTOL mode. And this is just basically balancing the entire thing on the jet engine and controlling it use those peroxide jets. And while this is a great simulation of controlling like a rocket powered descent vehicle, the problem is it's simulating at 1G, so if you roll 30 degrees off axis, you can accelerate sideways as if you are at 1G. But there is a switch on the throttle on the left, which when you flick it, it switches the vehicle into lunar simulation mode. And in that mode, it will the, the rotation will only accelerate you sideways as if you were under lunar gravity, which is exactly what you want. And there's a lot of processing power that's going into doing this. So first of all, that jet engine, when you flick it into this lunar mode, it's now only generating five sixth of a G worth of thrust. The other one sixth has to come from the peroxide jets. So now I'm controlling this as if I'm flying, you know, a, a rocket system. The jet engine is computer controlled so that it will not accelerate you sideways, it will counteract that. Also, there's a switch on the side which uh, enables uh, wind compensation so that if there is wind that is blowing you around, it will try to counteract that so that you can, you know, I imagine what it's like on the airless vacuum of the moon rather than the green grasses around this runway. And to be clear, this system not only gave the astronauts experience with flying in 1 6th G environments, it also gave the hardware developers experience with building these fly-by-wire control systems. So now let's look at these two flight modes from the outside. This is going to start out in LLTV VTOL mode. 
and yeah, you can see the, the peroxide jets firing for attitude control, and as the vehicle adjusts attitude, the jet continues to point downwards. So, again, if you turn the vehicle 30 degrees off axis, it's going to accelerate the yacht at about 5 meters per second, right, well, 4.9. And this is what you would expect if you were, say, flying a helicopter or other vertical takeoff vehicle in 1G. Now let's flick the switch for lunar gravity simulation mode and you'll notice the jet engine is on gimbals and it now points downwards only. So it's now being controlled by all those computers on the back, which by the way you'll notice they put all the computers way out in the back because they weighed about the same as the person in the front. You know, they needed to balance this thing out. And yeah, so when you go off axis now, the jet engine doesn't follow you, so you don't pick up that lateral acceleration as if you are in one, a 1G environment. And so that's how the LLTV simulated lunar gravity. Now, because this is in a simulator, you can do a lot of things that Neil Armstrong never got to do. For example, you know, being a pilot, I would normally uh, roll my plane in and park it between the other aircraft at the tie downs. Can I put this LLTV into a parking spot? Well, okay, if I was to do this for real, those aircraft would probably get flipped up by uh, you know the thrust from the jet. The jet wash would be blowing their wings up unless they were tied down. But, um, yeah, it's a challenge, right? Can we get it in here? Just imagine we're trying to find a parking space for Black Friday shopping. Yeah, not bad, not bad, yep. I think we got it, and gently does it. Excellent. Brilliant. <laughs> Wait a second, where's, there we go. Now I'm not implying that uh, I'm better than Neil Armstrong, but you know what? Neil Armstrong never had to land in a parking spot that small. So anyway, yeah, this is a bit of an oddball thing that I found. Like, I've, I've flown Orbiter, I've landed the lunar module in many, many simulators multiple times. So it's kind of weird to find a simulation of a simulator and then get to fly that over, you know, LAX because it's in the simulation, why not? The LLTV and its predecessor, the LLRV, are fascinating pieces of aerospace engineering built very quickly. They were the first vehicles, I believe the first aircraft to have fly-by-wire controls where the stick went to a computer and then the computer commanded the reaction thrusters to give the pilot control. And you know, flying the lunar module in Orbiter is free, whereas this is like a $20 purchase from, the, you know, the X-Plane store on top of owning X-Plane 12. So, you know, X-Plane isn't nearly as popular as Microsoft Flight Sim right now. And this is very much a niche product within the X-Plane ecosystem which makes the amazing attention to detail on this model and the systems uh, all that more amazing. I, I enjoyed mucking around with this. I got my $20 worth. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>